and we're going to uh, hear Yanis Potoshnik, who is in Brussels, and he is uh, the mm, chair of forum for AG. And uh, we would like to thank him very much for being here. Can Can you hear me, uh, Mr. Potoshnik? I'm hearing you well. Thank you. Okay, you have the floor then. Ladies and gentlemen, honorable guests, dear friends, uh, thank you all for being here today, both in person and online. And thank you to the forum's team alongside our partners, including the local ones, AGPB and the Foundation Francois Sommer for making this dialogue a reality. It is always a pleasure and a privilege as a chair to be delivering the opening words at the Forum for the Future of Agriculture. The French regional edition is special and particularly important. We all know how important the role is that France plays when it comes to healthy quality food and sustainable agriculture. With the COP26 ending only a few weeks ago, and with the build up to the French presidency getting started in the European Union, we have an opportunity to add to these important, timely and crucial dialogues. Honest and open dialogue certainly helps. And I very much look forward to the ideas that will follow the input of our experts, speakers in today's event and how all addressed could help us shape the common vision. Let me start by first sharing with you some thoughts about the importance of transformation and the role natural resource management plays in that respect. We all know and understand the seriousness of the challenges we face already quite well, but our understanding of the role natural resource management plays in that perspective is still rather limited. Natural resources provide us the foundation for the goods, services, infrastructure that make up our current socioeconomic systems. The use of natural resources and more narrowly of materials, which comprise everything extracted from Earth, sits at the very heart of the challenges we face. The way we mismanage them is the common cause of climate change, biodiversity loss, and also health pollution impacts. All these challenges are the consequences of drivers and pressures emerging from our behavior, from the old normal, of the still prevailing economic system. It is essential to address these drivers and to address them in a systemic way. Understanding that provides us with a clear message of hope that by identifying the root causes of this crisis, we can deliver policy responses that can tackle them effectively together. From the natural resource management point of view, the 21st century will be marked by two important parallel and complementary processes, decarbonization and dematerialization. And all our activities should be judged through the optic of how they contribute to the mentioned trends. What is needed is to add to the current efforts linked to the very important and need greening of the existing systems and structures of production, a system-based approach, which would not only address the supply side of current economic system, but also the demand side, existing overconsumption and wasteful use of natural resources. We need to complement efficiency also with sufficiency concepts. We need, as clearly pointed out by the International Resource Panel, I do co-chair, to decouple well-being and economic development from natural resource materials use and environmental impacts. Instead of just increasing outputs and profits for traditional sectors, we should rather focus on maximizing functionalities, our human needs. From a resource perspective, and we have learned how important natural resources are if we are to address the drivers of all the crises we face simultaneously, we can basically identify only four major human needs. Nutrition, housing, mobility, and the rest of consumer goods. Which leads us to the importance of sustainable nutrition. 
sustainable food, and sustainable agriculture. The topics this forum is all about. The common vision for sustainable farming and land use. By optimizing how we use natural resources, how we manage our lands, how we farm, how we process and how we consume, we can build a sustainable and better society where also future generations can prosper. In an opinion piece produced by IRP, which I do co-chair as mentioned by Isabella Teixeira, titled Building Biodiversity, we highlighted four principles, which would help us to do just that. To be truly effective, future actions needs to be focused on the root causes in addition to the conservation efforts. Robust, science-based measurement is central to all four. The principles are knowing your impact, planning together, growing with nature, and valuing nature. Knowing your impact is essentially the principle of value chain transparency. Every sector and every consumer must understand why and how they have an impact on nature. This transparency would enable decision makers to identify key points of intervention where environmental impacts along the value chain caused by production and consumption can be reduced. Planning together, integrated landscape planning, it's essential to gain the necessary full picture of competing spatial needs. Often decision makers and operating with incomplete knowledge of how resources are used, which drives their overexploitation. It should be mandatory for integrated land use maps to be part of the country's national climate and biodiversity plans. Growing with nature, scaling nature-based and circular solutions offers huge economic and environmental opportunities, including restoring degraded landscapes and job creation. Realizing these opportunities depends on understanding what makes production truly nature positive, which of course depends on strong scientific measurement. The final principle, valuing nature, is deeply needed because the intrinsic value of natural assets and the services they provide is not recognized by the economic system. This contributes to the mismanagement of natural resources. We must incentivize long-term investments in nature by accounting for the role it plays in how we produce and consume. This is a huge part of the overarching economic system change which we need to implement. It has been said by many, we cannot value what we do not measure. All solutions with sustainability in mind, like regenerative agriculture, carbon farming, sustainable agroforestry, and I could continue, should take these principles into account while designing the measures linked to the true cost accounting, value chain transparency, or sustainable trade, if we are to truly create a sustainable food system. Let me quickly touch some of the points we will address today. Achieving these goals in the age of much misinformation, even manipulation, will require digestible communication backed up with data-driven science and action. We must support the right leaders who are willing and capable of leading the change, including the ones featured in our Startups Corners, who will share the stories later on today. It is also important to listen to our younger generation. They are well-educated, responsible, well-connected, and willing to cooperate. They know it is about their future, their well-being, and their quality of life. It is high time to start respecting their calls and to listen to their worries. By working together, we can make a difference and really move in the right direction. With policy creation in mind, I'm thankful for the steps in the right direction. The European Green Deal has been a breath of fresh air in the political landscape. And I can claim that credibly since I've been part of that landscape for quite an important part of my life. Initiatives like the Farm to Fork strategy can support a fair transition towards a sustainable and more circular model. And we should do our best to help make them a reality. The dialogue to follow this morning on achieving the Farm to Fork strategy's ambitions 
and needed environmental targets will be critical conversation. If we can succeed in working out some of the right steps and acting upon them, we have the potential to importantly change how food systems function in Europe and likely around the world as well. By setting strong environmental targets and focusing on high quality food standards, we can shift our production methods from quantity to quality and in return support a well-being economy for people and the planet. Farmers cannot do this alone, this is clear. And stakeholders across the food value chain must actively engage in supporting this transition as well. If we want to keep our food standards high, we must also be aware not only of what we produced internally, but what food products we import from outside of the European Union. For this reason, and many others, I'm really glad to see also the topic of international trade being discussed today. Trade will be incredibly important in Europe as we increase our environmental standards through the European Green Deal. If we are honest with our commitments to implement sustainable development goals, we should contribute to sustainability efforts also on international level and stop outsourcing some harmful practices to different world regions. This is critical not only to respect our own values, but also to keep consistency with our aims to restrict potentially harmful imports. And going beyond agriculture, food products and how we trade them, we must investigate how we can tackle the climate crisis using other forms of land use. I really look forward to following the topic this afternoon on how forests can be used to support the fight against climate change through mitigation and adaptation. The role of forests to achieve a greener future and circular economy is massive. Not only can they serve as carbon sinks, but wood-based products, if forest ecosystems are of course harvested sustainably, can also help to downsize carbon intensive sectors such as textiles and construction. The role of nature-based solutions can never be underestimated or understated. Dear friends, in conclusion, let me for a moment return to a broader picture and some of the necessary changes we should consider applying based on a system change approach. What would all that mean in policy terms? Redefining consumption from owing to using. Redefining production from mass sales to providing efficient functionalities. Redefining core economic incentives, such as taxation, subsidies, public procurement. Integrating well-being as the objective across all policies. Measuring sustainability with a life cycle perspective. Harmonizing across all policy areas. Activating existing financial potential to enable transition. Looking at innovation in categories of economic ecosystems that provide societal functions rather than in categories of production sectors, and one could continue. According to economic theory, we, producers and consumers, behave rationally. This is true, but it is actually valid only in the short term for market players maximizing their well-being here and now. Since this rational behavior is based on the market signals not aligned, with longer term public interest, it does not lead to the long term sustainable solutions, economic, social, and environmental. One can hardly argue that behavior leading to climate, biodiversity, health, and social crisis we face, leading to imbalances among humans and nature, and imbalances among current and future generations, is rational. At least, if we are really intelligent as we claim. It is thus essential to fix the market signals and align them with the longer term public needs. There is a delusion in the assumption that by greening the existing systems and structures of production, which is of course very important and needed, necessary speed and scale of transition can be delivered and convincing and sufficient answers to fight climate change, biodiversity loss, pollution, and health implications can be provided. We need system change, and we need to address drivers and pressures leading to the 
multiple crises we face. This approach should guide us also through the today's forum. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all a fruitful, thoughtful dialogue based on the honest assessment leading to re-elections. Thank you very much, Mr. Pozocznik. We can give you a big round of applause. Thank you so much for this presentation. I would like to ask you one or two quick questions, if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, we have many different uh, players uh, along the chain. Now, according to you, which player has the most potential to help transition? And what other policies would you like to see implemented in order to facilitate uh, this uh, transition in line with the European Green Deal, of, also, of course? Yeah. Uh Thank you for the question. I, I guess you do not expect me to say anything else, but uh, reiterating that, of course, all actors in the food chain should play an active part. And uh, saying that and being, uh, as you know, a long time in policy making, I would certainly like to underline the role of the which policymakers play. In that respect, I would just like to add that the major funding delivery instrument, uh, CAP, would need to be, I think, better aligned with the strategic documents like Farm to Fork or European Green Deal. All public money should serve only one purpose, to help making the unavoidable and necessary transition to a, sust of, to a sustainable economy and a sustainable society possible, acceptable. Only those policy options, as good and necessary as they are, which will be also socially acceptable, are possible and could be applied in practice. Social and environmental transitions are two, si two sides of the same coin. And without an active role of farmers, without their real ownership, the transition efforts will always struggle and there will be little chance of success. When it comes to, to your second part of the question about concrete policy options uh, that we should focus on, I would uh, recommend exploiting the potential uh, uh, regenerative agriculture holds. It is uh, widely expect, uh, accepted by many, including uh, civil society and progressive agribusiness actors, and uh, it could certainly play an important bridge in bringing efforts of all stakeholders in the food chain together. So, Simply, we should be aware that we do not have any more the luxury of losing precious time for moving ahead and uh, for moving quickly to make a real impact. Thank you so much, Mr. Potoshnik. We thank you for your answers. Thank you for your participation this morning. It was a great pleasure. Take care. Stay safe.